Hey everyone, today we've got probably the oldest drill I've ever worked on. It's from the 1930s, manufactured by US Tools, not to be confused with US General, I think that's Harbor Freight or something. Uh, this goes back to the early to mid 1930s. It's a US Drills Commander drill. It's a very heavy drill. Let's look at it. All right, so you can see the US Tools logo right here. Very difficult to read this badge, but it says Commander on it. I don't know what else it says, but we're gonna try to get it so we can read that a little bit. The chuck still moves. Um, I mean, just look at look, just look at how old the brush screws are. Hopefully that doesn't have to come out. I have no, no idea, I guess it's a flathead. There won't be any Phillips head screws on this thing. Um, the cable has seen better days. Um, I very much doubt this is the original cord, but uh, we will not be testing it with this cord. That'll be the first thing we're going to do. It is, it's big. It's big and it's quite heavy. And uh, it is beat up. It is chips, scratches. This thing has has seen some seen some use let's say it's interesting is this um how this doesn't quite fit the body here that's really odd i looked online to try to find a picture of one of these and i did but it didn't have this i'm not really sure what that is um let's try the trigger the trigger is bad tough to say so that's gonna have to be worked so this this is gonna have to come off and come apart and it's gonna require extensive work very odd trigger but anyway that's what we've got so it's gonna be a lot of work getting this guy back but it's 90 years old so it's worth looking into and it's gonna be a fun project so let's get busy all right, so we're missing a flathead screw here. Um, so we'll have to find a replacement for that. A lot of dirt, a lot of dirt coming out as I take these screws out. I mean, if you think about it, um, Ford Model A's were still on the road when this thing was being sold and used. Well, I didn't notice, this actually has a trigger lock, which might be what's going on with this. All right, well, that's it, right? Let's just unwrap this cord here um, so that I can take this thing off. All right, let's see what's in here. Well, it is dirty. There is no doubt. It is quite dirty. I don't quite like how this handle is. It's very tricky to get at the power cord. I mean, my guess, yeah, the, this, this switch is definitely broken. I can see it. I'll give you a close up. So you can see this, this switch is broken. Um, interestingly, this might be the original cord, which is to me is mind boggling, but I don't see where it's been changed. But maybe. We, so we got to figure out how to get this switch out, which might be a matter of pushing the lock in. So let me play with that for a bit. Okay, so for all you struggling with this, <clears throat> because of the switch being broken, that was a problem. Um, because the trigger lock would not come, would not push in. But it looks like that is how you get this out. You push. Squeeze the trigger, 
push the trigger lock all the way in and then the switch starts to come out. And that's how we're gonna do it. A little confusing, but um, that's how it's gonna work. I need some extra wire here. I'm gonna cut this cable, I'll be right back. Since this power cord is completely useless, I'm just gonna cut it off. Um, it looks like this is all one piece, the strain relief, everything. So let's see. If maybe I can get at it in here, okay. I can. So I'm going to cut the wires in here. Alright, so now the belief is the switch should pull out. It's the hope, anyway. Looks like it is. Not easily though, and we still have a problem. Okay, so we can see where the ground wire connects. So we can take that and unhook it. Just in case that holding us, but it looks like this uh, trigger itself, uh, not compressing all the way is causing us a lot of trouble because it doesn't want to fit through. It's close. Maybe I can push on the bottom. I gotta be careful, this is very old. Plastic, it seems like. Bakelite, it would be, not actually plastic. There we go, okay, we've got a very interesting setup here. Let's take a look at what we've got going on. All right, so we know our ground wire goes right to there on the switch, but we've got to fix this switch. <laughs> so weird. All right, so here's a theory. There's a spring on this side and it doesn't seem to push enough force for this. It looks like there may have been a spring on this side as well, if in fact that's a hole. Aha, there is a pin there. Okay, so this pin Okay, so that's what I think is going on here. That's it. Okay, so I need another spring like this. That is going to be a tough thing for me to find. But let me go look in my hardware bins. I do have some springs. Oops, it turns out I had more springs than I thought got this. I think one of these came from a toolbox assortment I had. Oh, this looks very close. It's too big. Okay, possibility. Let's see which one of these is a better candidate. These are both big. And this is, this is going to be very tight getting this back in. this guy, but I won't be able to do that. All right, so let's look at this. If I hook this there. I'm gonna cut this guy. Let me 
get some pliers to form this and I'll be right back. All right, so now let's see what happens if we hook this guy up to the pin. Well, let's do it this way. There's more room down here. Hook up down there. Let's go up to the pin. two springs are they strong enough though they are and the lock mechanism push in locks push in again unlocks ah see that's what I was worried about this pin likes to pull through got to come up with an idea to make sure that this pen stays on that because it looks like there was a little head on this and it is no longer there all right so there's a couple ideas let's take the spring off I don't know about adding any flatness to this I don't think I could do that but what I could possibly do is shave a little bit off this pin so that this spring holds in the ring a little bit tighter all right so I'm gonna put some glasses on to be safe but these are also magnifying because when using a Dremel tool they're very good at spitting particles out so this bit has, has a grinding wheel that has a sharper edge. Looks like this is going to work. Alright, we've got a ridge. Let's see how well the spring holds in there. good. I think we got it. Still not totally set on this bottom here. In my opinion is that this needs to be spun. Trigger lock, locked. Off, trigger lock. 
work out. Great. All right. We got the switch worked out. That's a big plus. Now we're on to wiring. So I'm going to clean up some things. And uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so what I've got is a 14 gauge power cord and a strain relief. Um, so neutral go went here, hot went there, right? No, hot went here, correct. All right, let's look at these motor wires. The motor wires never move, um, so they're less likely to fray, but we've got to keep an eye on them. solder this on they just wrapped it and put some tape on it okay all right now the ground has to go all the way to there so I'm gonna need to strip this insulation back a little bit more We've got to come in. Let's try going back to about here. So to do this, you um, don't push too tightly on your strippers. Just go light so they gradually dig a groove into the outer insulation. When you start seeing the wires inside, you're pretty much there. Um, I can see them. this green a little bit more yeah all right let's put our strain relief we're gonna have room for this this looks like it had a, a something that screwed in there. Um, this strain relief is actually gonna be in the way of the switch. So this probably isn't ideal. Let me see if I've got something uh, more suitable that we can use. I took off a strain relief once that was threaded. Maybe I can find it. No luck finding a suitable strain relief. So when that happens, I prepare to simply make one out of shrink tubing. So what I'll do is I'll put several layers of shrink tubing down. So we'll shrink this and then hopefully this will slide over it. Let's see if it will. It's very tight. All right, so what we'll do is we'll do this. We'll do two of these. One long piece. And if it'll shrink enough, one very wide piece to go over all of it. Should shrink enough, very heavy stuff. But I don't have any really long pieces of shrink tubing, unfortunately. But for now, we'll get all this out of the way.
think it will work out better. If I run this on that side. Okay, so one thing we can do about this really old insulation on this is we can put shrink tubing on it. Because it's old and we might as well preserve it. So to do that, we're just gonna go in our shrink tubing and we're gonna take some small shrink tubing. That might be too small. I'm gonna insulate these wires all the way in. shrink that and then we should be able to slide this piece on top of that so we're going to have to go three or four pieces let me get the shrink uh the heat gun So we're just going to overlap it a little bit. I'm still wrestling with getting this switch in here. And um, it, I gotta say, it was pretty odd how it was so difficult to get out. We've got this cut here in the handle, which I don't know what that was for. Somebody clearly did that. I don't think that broke. And now I'm looking at the inside and I'm seeing, if I can get that to hold still. All right, so the only wire that has to be up will be neutral. The rest can go down. This should give me enough room. Ah, looks like it's going to do it. Well, perhaps I spoke too soon. What could we possibly be sticking on now? <laughs> the 
what is it catching on? That is the strangest thing. Hopefully you can see, I'm trying to get a camera angle where you can see exactly what's going on there. So it's possible that this isn't exactly the right switch. But you can see the sides, as I try to force this thing, are getting chewed up. It's just so tight in there. So I'm gonna file it out, give myself a little bit more room. It's not from here to here that I need more room in, but it is left and right. It just doesn't wanna go in there. So I'm gonna file it out, give myself some room. Well, we'll see how that goes. I gotta take a break for a bit, but I'll be back. All right, so success. And we, we can lock it. Um, wow. I don't think this is the original switch. I'm sticking to that. There's just no way, just no way. All right, so now we're in the mode where we're gonna rewire this. So here is our um, neutral. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shorten this a bit because I've got this and strip it. So I'll get some shrink tubing and we'll solder that. And this guy, you know, I may shorten this as well because now we're up at the top. But for now, let's see if we can just get it on there. It's not going to be the easiest thing to do. Just overall not a great design at all all right so that's on so we've just got this guy uh, let me get one of those little shrink tubing things so again what I'm using is these guys blue should be fine Do any damage when I touch that shrink tubing? No, I didn't go through the shrink tubing. That should be good. That should be good. All right, so I'm gonna do one last test before I button this thing up because I really have screwed with this thing a lot. So hopefully we're good. Trigger. Good. Okay. Little sigh of relief there. Um, all right, we're unplugged. This is a good time to actually use 
dry lube, not regular WD-40, dry lube. I'm gonna spray it in the motor and let it just drip out. I use this on the switch as well. Um, it works, works really well. But we're gonna use this to kind of clean some, there's a lot of dirt. I'll give you a close up again. There's a lot of dirt in this motor, as you can see. In fact, nothing, it's all black. Understandable um, for something built 90 years ago. So we're just gonna spray this in and let it run out. you can see from that that there is a lot of dirt that came out now it's important at this point you give this thing plenty of time to dry before you go firing it up again we're not plugged in all we're gonna do is try to get this thing to bolt back in without breaking any wiring so we're gonna wrap this wire in there. This is why it's important I put all that extra shrink tubing on it. All right, let's, um, these screws, we need to find one more. So let me go look at my hardware bin, see if I've got something like that. This is my favorite jar for working on these things see there's a lot of screws that are pretty close to what we're going to be looking for. We'll see if we get lucky. Okay, I did find one. Uh, it's not the same head, bigger head. Probably not much I can do about that. But correct 1024 threads. So for starters. We'll put three of these guys in and then we'll see. Well, you know, now that I say that, I'm gonna uh, wire brush the heads on these. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take these screws that look pretty bad and just run the heads through the wire brush. And for this, you probably want to wear gloves for safety. That's why you want to do it. It's very quick and it takes care of them right off the bat. I don't want to put these newer ones, 1024s, because they're Phillips. So if I ever come across the right screw, I'd swap it out. I don't expect that to be the case though. I think this guy's probably in here full time now. Just enough threads to grab it. Okay. Now, we've still got to shrink tube our stress relief, but before we do that, let's once more run a test. Okay. Let's recap where we are because it's getting kind of late. It is about seven o'clock here in Florida and um, it's March. Uh, not many mosquitoes out, which is a good sign. And um, we've got it. We've got the switch working now. I don't still don't think this is the correct switch. We've got it wired. We've got the motor cleaned out. We've got the strain relief done, which I don't think the camera captured because it ran out of disk space. And so I had to delete a bunch of things. 
And next step, which we'll tackle tomorrow, is we're gonna take this front off, grease it, and then it's cleaning it up. I'm not sure what I'll be able to do with this badge uh, because the paint, which apparently was blue, is mostly off of it. And I may be able to paint it and steel wool it if, if this is raised enough, and I can feel it, but I'm not optimistic that's gonna work. I will give it a shot though, I think. But anyway, that's where we're at. So, not bad. <laughs> I will say, it, it took me, I probably thought half an hour to do the switch, maybe an hour at the most. And, and it took me about two and a half to three hours just to get the switch wired and back in place. I had to file out a lot of metal. That is not the switch that this thing came with. Clearly, it can't be. There's just no way that they put, put it in that tight. Um, but the good news is we were able to repair the spring on the switch. We've got it wired, we've got it working so it's wired right. We've got the, um, the lock working correctly. It looks good, it's all in place. And so now we can move on to greasing and polishing. So anyway, I'll be back tomorrow. Take care. Hey everyone, and welcome to day two of working on the 1930s era US Tools Commander drill. We did accomplish a lot yesterday. We got um, the switch fixed, which I had some time to think about it overnight. And my conclusion is there is no way that that's the original switch. It was probably replaced sometime in the 1950s. And I'm basing this on the fact that the switch is, is um, a combination of metal and plastic and it doesn't fit in this drill. It required me to do some uh, manipulation. I also thought about the missing spring. Um, and even though the head was broken, I think possibly the head on that pin that holds the spring got broken when they were trying to force the switch in there before. And then they decided to leave the spring out in order to get the switch to fit in. So that was probably all done when it was rewired with this wonderful condition power cord, um, which really seems like a 1950s era cord. So what we've got to do now is we're gonna take the front off and grease up the gearbox, and then we're gonna clean it up. So that's gonna be interesting. So I think the hard part's over. I, it took me way longer than I expected yesterday, but I've got the whole afternoon to get this thing ready. Um, if I decide to use any paint, that might take me into tomorrow. But either way, let's get busy. Okay, our first step is going to be taking this front off, which apparently only has three screws holding it, which seems really unusual. I've got one, two, three. There seems like there should be a fourth, but I do not see it. So, uh, the other thing is I've got to be very careful when I take this off to not, I don't want to pull the spindle out. It's not a disaster. It just means I've got to take the brushes out. But I have had some experience with older motors that sometimes when you do that, um, things just get a little unsettled. And because um, this thing has worn in a certain way its whole time but I've seen mostly on electric fans that sometimes when you do that something about how you put it back in and how the bearings sit makes it run hot and whereas this is 1930s um, not that it has to run constantly like an electric fan but it's extra work I don't think I need to do. I'm not sure you can even see what I'm doing here, can you? Not really, I'm out of frame. Figures. This is the third screw. So we'll see if it is in fact just three screws holding this thing together.
all three screws appear to be the same size. And it is three. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it open. It looks like it wants to take the spindle with it. I don't think there's any way I'm gonna be able to avoid that. Unless I can go in there and hold it in place. But unlike a modern fan, I don't see that like some of the fans in these little vent slots have the have a cooling blade and you can just go in like with a flathead screwdriver and hold it in place. Um, I don't see that here. But as I pry it up very carefully, maybe I'll see something like that. If not, I'll be pulling it all the way open. All right, I can see it. Right, let me give you a close-up. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So right in there, you can see the shaft, okay? If I pull this out hard, it may pull the spindle out right outside the motor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a flathead. I'm just gonna kind of put a little pressure on it so that when I pull this off, the, uh, the worm, not worm gear, but the long gear comes out of the gearbox. The motor gear, I guess you'd call it. There you go. All right, here's the gearbox. Here's what I was talking about. See the cooling blades? They're further in on this motor. So we're gonna clean out the inside of this and we're going to take, I believe, this inside plate off with these two screws. So let me get some cleaner. We'll do that first. So I'm going to put my finger on these blades. dirt coming out. See how much cleaner it is in there though already. Here's a good comparison. So I sprayed this wall. I have not sprayed that wall. So that shows you how much dirt is in this guy. Some of this grime on here that I'm wiping off probably is older than World War II. If you think about that, it's kind of mind-blowing. This gives you an indication of what the uh, inside or the outside finish actually probably looked like, how bright it was. There appears to be a serial number in here. It just looks like 691 or 691. Yeah, 691 or four. Could be 694. <laughs> No idea what that means. All right, let's get this stuff out of here. Dump it out. Take my three screws out first. So, it's interesting. This was clean when we started. Look at all that. And that's after I dumped it out. Look at, look at that amount of dirt that's come out of this thing. back in it so I don't lose them or the washers all right let's see if I can easily grease this if not you can probably grease it in here that almost looks like a grease port but um, I'm gonna take these two screws out and see if this plate it doesn't look like it will but it may if it lifts off then it's going to be pretty easy to put grease in there. Oh, 
hopefully it does come up good. It's coming up. Okay, so now we should be able to scoop the old grease out. Oof. Well, not often do you pull the uh, lid off one and you're met with this vile smell. Yuck. I don't know what that grease smells like that for. Let's see how bad it is. I mean, honestly, it looks wet, but that could be because I was spraying the hell out of it. So let's dig it out and see what we're up against here. I think I'm gonna scoop the grease in this. I don't think I'll even use the grease gun. I don't know. Oh, geez, it stinks. Wow. I wonder what kind of grease it is. I'm not used to it uh, really having such a weird smell. You know what it almost smells like? Um, differential fluid. If you've ever um, added or changed the, the oil in your 4x4 in the front axle, um, you, you'll probably know what that smell is. And that is similar to what this smells like. It, it is something that really is not of this earth. It's a gross smell. All right, so we've got most of it out. So now we're gonna fill it with modern grease. I was gonna scoop it and then I realized I put that canister in here. So I don't have a canister to just scoop it out. That's okay. It's just gonna take a lot to fill this. They apparently wanted this thing this well really full of grease. I'm gonna say that's enough. I don't wanna go crazy with it for the amount of use this thing's gonna be seeing in the future, which is probably fairly low. All right, let's clean the grease off this. All right, this grease is actually thicker. <laughs> wow. If anybody actually knows, um, what it is that I'm smelling here, other than just general decomposition of the grease, uh, I'd be very curious. I'm gonna clean this off a little bit. I'll be right back. All right, let's put this panel back on. Next up, since I um, sprayed the motor clean, I'm gonna put a coat of dry lube in it. Since whatever I put in yesterday, I probably washed most of that out, but that's okay. Took a lot more dirt out, not surprising. Okay, so we're gonna have to let that dry. While that dries, I'm gonna wire brush these screws because these go on the outside. So it only takes a few seconds and you can go from this, from these to that. It only takes a few seconds. The only thing I say is wear gloves and hold on tight because uh, especially whereas I'm working outside here, 
if if you go too tight and one of these screws goes shooting off, you're gonna have a struggle finding it. And I am speaking from experience. I have done that. All right. What I sprayed inside is probably dry or dry enough. Um, let's put this guy back on. They're all snug, again, especially when dealing with castings and stuff. Don't just tighten one screw. Make them all snug, make them all tight, and then do the serious tightening at the end. All right. Good to go. All right. Okay. All right. So we are kind of in the um, cleanup phase, polishing phase, and all that. And this brass badge is going to be tricky. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of polish it all up at once, and then we'll focus on the badge. The badge can't be removed. Um, it's going to be very tricky for me to try to actually paint it and use steel wool to take it off. It almost looks like there's a date on here. Wouldn't that be nice? All right, um, let me get a towel and then we're gonna start cleaning up. So our first step in this process is we're gonna use WD-40 and steel wool, fine steel wool. And this, this is actually, this is regular WD-40, which I don't use for much, but I do use a lot for this. And it works really well because it's caustic. It will both clean it and help polish it a bit. And I got started using it for this because I saw a six pack of this WD-40 at the flea market for like 10 bucks. And I was like, oh, this could save me some time polishing. But you see, like how immediately it starts cleaning it. The brass is is actually becoming readable because the steel wool is lightly polishing the raised parts so i may just leave it like that if i can get it so it looks right because it's starting to look pretty good you can now read commander or at least most of it something commander half. I think that's a half. But anyway, we're working on the body now. We'll get to that later. That requires a little bit more fine detail. Ah, let's wipe it off. And see, we'll do a comparison of one side to the other. This is so beat up. So here's a before and there's an after. Um, noticeable difference. And this is not polish, this is just steel wool. So I'm gonna continue with the steel wool and um, I'll do the other side and then we'll be back. So cleaned it up enough to find that there is actually a grease port in it for putting grease in it. Um, it was 
so caked with grease it just looked like dirt, but it is actually um, a screw that you can take out to regrease it. That's interesting. But we're getting there. We're almost cleaned. Okay, the cleaning process is done. It took me a little longer than expected, um, although I guess it should be expected since this thing is likely 90 years old. Um, we can now read most of the batch. <clears throat> it's a half inch commander, 450 RPMs. This says the United States Electrical Tool Company. Uh, voltage, amps, I can't really read that. 450 RPM I can read. I guess that was the, the that's this logo right there. Um, but I think, um, even with this little bit of blue paint here, I'm going to leave this badge as it is. It's readable, and um, honestly, it looks pretty good. So, I still want to polish it, which might be a bit much to do with something like this, because it's only so good this is ever going to come out. It, after polishing, it'll look like this, just a little shinier. And I'm going to probably paint inside these and I have this idea that maybe I'll paint this front piece here. Because if I painted that, um, it would likely distract you from how beat up the rest of the body is. Then you'd focus on the shiny paint. The question is what color should I paint it? Um, it looks like the US Tools color was likely blue. Um, so if I have a nice midnight blue if not i'll just go probably with black but next step i'm going to polish up the chuck using my patent pending wire brush to polish a chuck process so how that is done is we're going to run oh it's a heavy drill i'm going to push the push the chuck all the way out and we're going to run the chuck under the wire brush using the wire brush motor and the drill motor. All right, we're going to be good to go. Oh, there's a heavy drill. longer I just wanted to check the drill it has, probably hasn't run like that in a long time all right this drill sounds like a vacuum cleaner it's very loud and interestingly you, it pushed out so much air you can feel it right out of it push it right out against my shirt as I was running it. It's pretty wild. It's a great drill. All right, chuck is done. We're clean. I guess we'll move on to polishing. Okay. To polish this, I'm gonna use Chemical Guys Heavy Metal Polish. This is, says chrome stainless steel aluminum. I actually find very little difference in how this works and the bright metal polish works. They seem to uh, both pretty much do the same thing. The bright metal is blue, this one's white, but um, let's take it on this side and see what it has to, what it can do. As I said, it's still going to look beat up, it's just going to look shinier. It's going to take off a lot. All right, so here is one coat. So see, you can still see how beat up it is, but it's certainly shinier, and that's before. So pretty big difference. So um, I'm gonna polish the rest of it. I don't know if I'll do two, two coats. I mean, it really is, it's so beat up. Um, but I'm really thinking about painting this front. I think this, if I just paint this piece, 
and these logos, I think it's going to look sharp. Because the truck already looks like new. All right, so let me continue polishing, and we'll be back. I actually did two coats. On something this beat up, you'd really have to kind of sand it down to get everything, all the little nicks and dings out. Um, but what I did notice in doing this was that it looks like at one point this had red paint on it. I don't see much signs of, the of, of it on the body, but I do see a little bit on the handle, and I do see a little bit on this handle. So this piece here could be removed and painted red. I don't really like that idea. The nose, on the other hand, um, I don't see signs that it was actually ever painted. I don't want to do it red. Um, Milwaukee's were red. Still are. So let me see what I've got. Let's see what we can do. Um, the badge is obviously brighter now because it has polish on it. All right, I disassembled it again. I got this front piece off. I uh, taped up the chuck and the little band right in front of it. Everything else we can paint. I taped up these two because I'm going to paint these and go over them with steel wool to bring the U.S. out. And um, here's what I've got for paint choices, okay? This I used on the MBC Toolbox rails, and it's a really nice blue. Uh, I don't have much of it, but I'm pretty sure I have enough for this and these. Now, this other blue, this gloss regal blue, this is the color that was used on old drill presses. Um, I think the 1930s craftsmen's used this color blue. So it's, it's um, probably a period correct color, although this looks period correct as well. This is obviously brighter than that. So I'm kind of torn between the two, but I'm gonna wash this down with acetone and then get ready and put some primer down and then we'll see. Okay, so this front piece, I am gonna put primer on it. The US Tools logos, I'm not gonna put any primer on it because I'm going to go over those with steel wool to take probably most of the paint off and I don't want black primer showing up underneath. I just want the silver. I'm putting a good coat of primer on here. I did wipe it down, but you never know with old tools. There could be oil hiding somewhere, hopefully not. This is really rough enough that a hammered finish would work wonders but um, there's no hammered blue paint available okay I'm going with the gloss regal blue I don't really need to mask up much more than the logo itself Ooh, that is oh, that is an interesting blue it's very bright not heavy paint at all That or I just did not get the oil out of that logo. That second coat seems to make a big difference. All right, so that's gonna take one. This is mostly dry. <clears throat> Let's see what it looks like on a larger surface. It's It's got a lot of purple in it, which I don't like. Yeah, it definitely looks purple. I think I'll be going back to the uh, navy blue. Let's see what it looks like when it dries. But right here. Um, it definitely looks like that color though. I can tell you right now, that is very close to what those old drill presses look like. We'll see what it looks like when it dries. We could be okay. Looks good though. Interestingly, the, the nozzle, the, the top didn't seem to have any oil on it. It came out nice. That, on the other hand, it seems to like really not want to take the paint. Get 
need about five coats on here. And it looks good. It looks real good, in fact. <laughs> it's gonna really detract. I mean, it's really gonna pull your eyes away from the body of the drill, which is much more beat up. And I've also got like five coats on these US's. Paint does not seem to want to stick very well. You can see it coming through. That may or may not be a problem because it's coming through on the US, which is what I plan on taking the paint off of. But uh, anyway, I gotta take a break for a while while that dries, so I'll be back in a few hours. All right, it's been a few hours and it's late enough, it's six o'clock. I've decided I'm gonna let this dry overnight. Um, I put a lot of coats, probably, I ended up putting two more coats on, so it's probably got six coats on it. And as for that, um, I want to let, I put a lot of paint on that because it wasn't sticking well. It looks like we've pretty much got it now. So I'm gonna let that dry overnight as well. And then we'll do the final assembly tomorrow. All right, I let the paint dry overnight and we're gonna clean this logo up and then reassemble. Um, this screw in here for the oil, I'm gonna actually uh, take that out and clean it up because obviously I have paint on it. So to make sure it doesn't damage the paint around it, I'm gonna cut the paint. And now I'm just gonna use the steel wool and take the paint off of it. Put that back in place. This piece is ready. Now, the US logos, let's take the masking tape off. I'm gonna use some steel wool to clean up the overspray first. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to ball up the steel wool. I'm going to lightly go over this to try to just get the paint off the US. I don't know if this is going to work. It's going to take about 10 minutes. Let's give you a close up. So it's starting to. The more I go over it, it'll take it off. Always wear gloves when working with stainless steel. All right, so there's one of them. There's the other one. You can read them, they look good. All right, so this split here, we're gonna work on that next. I don't know if I showed this before, but this is actually a split right in the mantle. And I really don't know how it got there. It doesn't make any sense to me why it's there, but we're gonna patch that. To patch this, I'm just gonna put some JB Weld in there. JB Weld is a two-part epoxy, if you don't know. 
you basically just mix the black and the white together. And when you get a kind of medium gray, it's ready to go. All right, so that's about right. kind of got to fill that hole enough so that when this dries, I'll just sand it. I am going to shoot some grease in here for this gear. I greased this thing, but maybe not enough for that. All right, so even though the gearbox is greased, um, I want to make sure that when I push this gear in, it gets grease on it as well. Line up the holes. One, two. Looks like we got it. That's the way it goes. they're all in. Snug them up and then you can tighten them. All right. Uh, got one more piece. The uh, these were in the back here to hold the cord, or cord clips. So I got all the rust off them with a wire brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint these black. I'm using hammered black, which does not require primer. So it's a little quicker in the process. Hammered black paint wears really well. Dries a bit slower. Oh, we'll let those sit. If they stay in the sun, they'll dry pretty quick. All right, the cord grips um, should work out just fine. Gonna be a little tight grabbing this thing. So we'll probably have to bend them back a little bit. Well, let's get them in place first. Perfect. All right, let's tighten this guy down. Holding our cord tight. Let's see if I can put a rubber grommet in here to kind of cover up the screw for the brush. I don't know if it'll hold. It'd be nice if it did. All right, that covers that up really nice. Let's look at the other side. All right, we are in the final steps. We got the cable done, we got it all assembled. The only thing left is um, to add a handle. And I looked at this and it, it is apparently three quarters, but it's interesting because the outer threads you'll see are actually wider, which had me confused that maybe it wasn't a three quarter, but it is. So I've got a piece of three quarter inch pipe and 
I'm going to do what I did on my Craftsman drill that I restored. I'm actually going to take, I've got this one inch shrink tubing. And so what I'm actually going to do is I am going to make a rubber, rubberized anyway, handle for this. Right, I can manage to get this all the way through because it is pretty big. I'm actually going to uh, have it run the whole length. I'm gonna get a pair of scissors, okay? Um, when it shrinks, it'll pull up a little bit, which is fine. And um, I'll cut around here. All right, let me get my heat gun. Let's shrink it on there. All right, I'll hold it with the scissors. extra width allows the shrink tubing to go in. All right. Well, it took me some time to get this one done, but I think you'll agree it's nice. It's really nice. You can read that. Tools, half inch commander. Some people may not like this blue front. I'm indifferent on it. I could have left it, but it adds some character to it. Little matching there. But yeah. All right, that's it. A 1930s, early 1930s, I believe, United States Tool Company half inch chuck commander drill pretty cool project pretty big project um that switch not being the right switch really caused a lot of trouble had i known right off the bat it was going to be um the wrong switch it, it should have actually I and mean, thinking back i should have just made the connection because that switch had more modern plastic on it like it was made in the 1950s or 60s it wouldn't have been the same if it was made in the 1930s i mean bakelite did exist and um, I forget what Westinghouse had. They had a, they had a certain type of uh, plastic that was cotton fibers, but probably wouldn't have been used for that. So I should have known that switch was actually not the original. And there were other clues, like the wiring had been redone at some point. But hey, you know, I did what the previous people should have done. I filed the inside out a little bit to accommodate the switch, and it made the wiring a little bit safer. And um, you know, we were able to seal that split in the handle with JB Weld. I think the paint looks good. Um, I'm pretty happy with it overall. I, I don't know what I'll use it for, but it would be great for stirring like a five gallon uh, container of paint. I mean, it has a lot of power. You can just feel it. So anyway, if you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And um, 
you know, if you want to tackle something like this, this is old. 90 years old for an electric power tool, that's pretty old. But you know, I'd never done one before and that's part of the fun of the channel is, is I try to see if I can just tackle it. And we got through it, we got through it, so you can too. So don't be intimidated. Just go out, get busy. Take care.